All right, so this video is going to be about external oil coolers and not just any external oil cooler. It's going to be about my style of external oil cooler. Uh, you watch my videos, you know that my external cooler sits inside the engine compartment and it requires a draw through. So in other words, I use the fan that's part of the normal cooling system. I don't have any external fans. I use the fan the doghouse fan to pull air through my oil cooler. The air from my oil cooler, which has now been warmed up, will now pass into the motor. Uh, and uh, like I say, I, I've had this idea, uh, you know, putting together this video for a pretty good long time, but uh, I had somebody ask a question, well, not really ask a question, but offer a suggestion. And, uh, you know, You've watched, hopefully, some of the videos that I put out. They're a little bit more technical. This one's not going to be super technical. I don't have enough data to get super technical on it. Just a couple of real simple things. I'll do a little bit of Samba stuff. Uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, baby. you got to do some Wikipedia reading. And uh, anyway, but I had a person comment. And uh, let me read the comment. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but if I were you, I would really think about investing in a better oil cooling system. A doghouse cooler, along with the matching fan, fan shroud, and cylinder tin should do the trick. Adding a deep sump would also be nice. This is not a video about deep, sump, deep, uh, deep sumps. I don't do a deep sump. <laughs> Just forget it. Deep sump's worthless for me. I hope to see more vids. All right. Yes, I will be doing more vids. I have my car back now, so we can do some more vids, and I can do some more working on my oil cooling system that I have thought about. And I'm going to tell you right now some of the things that I have thought about as far as my external oil cooling system goes. Okay, in order to answer this question, one of the things you have to understand is the concept of heat transfer. Okay, I don't need to read a whole bunch of this stuff, but as you can see, I'm reading from Wikipedia. Wikipedia, I mean, it's a fantastic resource. If you don't read from Wikipedia, you're just not, uh, you're not educating yourself. It's just so full of quick and down dirty facts. You don't have to dive into it. You've got like a summary right here at the top. Just read the summary. Anyway, the important piece of the, piece of the summary that you need to read is, uh, let me get to it here. Heat flows so that the body and the surroundings reach the same temperature, at which point they are in thermal equilibrium. Such spontaneous heat transfer always occurs from a region of high temperature to another region of lower temperature. It's described in second law of thermodynamics, which is why when I, you know, we have to take a look at those three temperatures I told you about, the primary three temperatures, the head temperature, the oil temperature, the exhaust temperature. Okay, over on the Samba, there is uh, a conversation called external oil cooler or doghouse conversion. So let me read a little piece of wisdom from uh, somebody in here. Uh, there's a guy on the Samba. He's by the screen named Cusser, and Cusser has a few photos and talks about this particular setup. He's got an older style setup. Anyway, I quote, I've used such an external cooler on the front of the fan shroud. He's running in 1835, lives in Arizona, high temperatures, hot, summertime driving. He even used to run it with the air factory air conditioning, so, uh, and he didn't run hot. Now, I know that that's anecdotal evidence, but he's running the fan in such a way that he's pulling the oil through the cooler. So it is the standard, he's taking the heat from the oil and dumping it into his engine. Okay, so let's find somebody who says you're dumping heat into the engine. Those 70s style coolers, and that's when Cusser put it onto his system in the 70s, that people screwed on the back of the fan shroud are worthless. Preheat the air that's trying to cool the heads and cylinders and slip on fittings and hose clamps like those uh, like to blow off. And again, Custer said that his stuff never blew off and he didn't leak and he ran it for 30 years. And I'm running A&N fittings, so my fittings are not going to blow off. I mean, anyway, the important part of that particular one was worthless. 
and preheat the air. Let me find some more preheating. Here's another guy. This guy happens to live in Maryland. He also ran one of these external coolers. His uh, particular situation, he ran a bus, 69 Westphalia. Same external tubing, thin cooler. He got 100,000 miles and only had to do a valve job. Still ran like new with excellent compression and used no oil when I sold it. Okay. The draw through the oil cooler. So you've got a couple of guys telling you, I've got a draw through oil cooler and it works fine. It's a couple of guys. And of course, my own personal experience is I had two vehicles using the draw throughs and neither one of them ever melted down. Got lots of miles, they ran fine. Okay, I've got another user, same thread. Doghouse method dumps oil heated air out. That's important. You've taken air that could go into the motor and you've dumped it out. Rather than attempt to cool the attempt. This is the standard. You're going to attempt to cool the engine with it. All right, the fan, uh, the type with the fan over the inlet dumps heat into the engine cooling airflow. It dumps heat into the airflow. This is the standard wisdom. Doghouse does not restrict inlet of the fan. Yes, it does. It's a bump that sits on the outside edge of the, of the housing. Air can come into that hole from all 360 degrees. With the doghouse that plugs up that side of the motor, the air can't come in from that particular side. So yes, it does block to some extent the ability for air to flow into the motor. Now, in general, the air is going to come down through all those cooling inlets, and it's going to flow down and into the hole. But that doesn't mean it doesn't flow down and out to the sides and come in from the sides. One of the sides is going to be blocked by the doghouse. Uh, we also need to look at head temperatures. Okay, head temperature. I've got a guy who's got a 65 Beetle with a 1600cc dual port. And uh, he's saying he's got cylinder head temperatures of 390 and he was a little bit over 400 at 60 miles an hour. So this guy was running 390 to 410 at highway speeds, about 65 miles an hour. Very good. Uh, his outside temperatures were 45 to 50 degrees, but that's actually a pretty cool day. All right, here's somebody saying the safe operating temperature is 3 to 350, while 300 would be idle, 350 probably as you're cruising down the highway. It's amazing. There really isn't all that much information that's accurate. Hard to find somebody who's actually taken a real consistent approach to reporting what the cylinder head temperatures are. So many words, so few that actually have any real data. Cylinder head temperatures, good guy. He's got 350 to 400. All right, here's a guy I like this. He, and I quote, uh, funny how in a technical form you get threads like this where everything said is anecdotal. So, yeah, this guy's going with 220 for the oil. Oh, here's somebody saying they get 500 degrees Fahrenheit on their head temps for maybe 20 minutes. Oh, that must have been a pretty powerful motor. Oh, there's a guy who's got some big hills he has to go up. 425 head temps. <laughs> I like this one. This is in reference to the oil has to hit 212 degrees Fahrenheit so the water burns off. Okay, this guy says that's an old wives' tale. Yes, very true. Think about it. Do we need to see 212 degree days for rain puddles to disappear? No. I've got a guy here who has talked to engineers about oil temperature. And the engineers say that the sweet spot for oil is 200 to 210 degrees. You have maximum lubricity, the ability to suspend contaminants, move things into the oil filter. I have an oil filter. Proper oil flow. Well, yeah, you've got an oil pump. You've got to get the flow. The ability of the motor to make the most power due to reduced drag, I, again, viscosity. Most conventional oils will handle 230 to 250. Synthetics can handle much higher, easily 250 sustain. I like this. He says that the oil coming off the pistons will be about 50 degrees higher than what your gauge reads. I think that's a conservative estimate. 
I think we're going to go with 350. So we've got exhaust gas temperatures, let's say 100 degrees. We've got cylinder head temperatures, 350 degrees. And oil temperature, what do you want to go with? Let's go with 220. I like 220. Air to the doghouse, 10%. It's actually probably more than that. It's probably closer to 15. Why do I say it's closer to 15? Why did they go to the doghouse to begin with? Because they were dumping heat into the motor? Get the fuck out of town. It is not because they're dumping heat in the motor. They had to cover a friggin' warranty. It's a warranty issue. The old system, the cooler would fill up with filth and muck. Then what happens? Well, the oil cooler doesn't cool. You got hot oil. Plus, it blocks the flow of air to that side of the motor. Now I have hot oil and a blowing air, you know, hot air, you know, minimal amounts of air to the other side. What happens? Warranty repair because you blew your motor. So they take the cooler, they dedicate the air. Now I have a certain amount of air that can go to the heads and a certain amount of air that goes to the oil. And even if my oil cooler plugs up, and it's going to plug up, it at least doesn't take the heads out with us, and we've got our warranty issues covered. There's nothing wrong with uh, putting it inside the head. Go back and look at a 356 motor, all right? 1,588 cc's. They built these motors for what, like 20 years, 1949 or something like that, late 40s, I think they started developing them. But anyway, they produced them through 1969, stuck them in the 912 every friggin' year. They would never doghoused it. A manufacturer that had the monetary funds to be able to build the system the way it should have been built with a doghouse, and they didn't build it that way. Why? Because they were not dumping heat into the engine. Those engineers understood what they were doing. Your typical Volkswagen guy does not understand. The typical Volkswagen guy thinks, yeah, let me say it again, you're dumping heat into the engine. No, you're not. So let's continue. Percentage of air in the doghouse is 10%, which means you're left with 90% of the air going to the heads. Fantastic. Now, in my particular case, I've got a draw-through cooler. I'm trying to get about 10% of my air to go into my cooler and about 90% of the air to run through. So I get to take this, and I get to put it into my engine. Dumping heat into the engine. This goes into the engine. But let's take a closer look at what happens. Okay, so let's try and answer the question of whether or not we are dumping heat into the engine. So we have to answer some questions. All right, first of all, we've got a nice hot day. Everybody likes to talk about the hot days. We've got an ambient air temperature of 100 degrees. What's the temperature of our oil? Uh, maybe it's a little bit hotter than 230, but I think 230 degrees for Volkswagen, that's, uh, that's reasonable. We'd like to get it down a little bit below that, but 230 is fine. Oil heated air. Okay, here's where you got to kind of question things. So if I've got a doghouse with 230 degree air, and I'm putting 100 degree air into it, what's the temperature of the air coming out of it? Uh, well, you have to, of course, follow the laws of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics states that heat flows from hot stuff to cold stuff. Uh, we also have the issue of no heat transfer system, which is energy, is 100% efficient. So, since our oil is 230 and our ambient air is 100, let's say that we've got uh, an oil-heated air that comes out of the doghouse at 165 degrees. I think that's fair. Oil heated air, 165. It cannot be higher than the oil temperature itself at 230. That would be physically impossible. It would imply that there is, in fact, no air flowing through the cooler at all. So as soon as you start applying air through the system, the air temperature drops below 230, and there's a fair amount of air flowing through the system. Therefore, we don't hit 230. It's closer to 165. We also have to have head temperature. Head temperature is 350 degrees. I have read people state on the Samba, and I just think, holy crap, you guys are out of your freaking mind. 250. My head's 250 degrees. I'm sorry, dude, but if you've got 250 degrees, you're not measuring it at the right spot. Uh, but again, it's anecdotal. Everybody's different. Somebody took it at this part of the motor. Somebody's over here at this part of the motor. You know, even if you're like sitting on the exact same thing, I'm at the number three spark plug. All right, but you're sitting on a 9, you know, a 1,200cc motor, and you didn't happen to mention that. You're living in altitude. It was a 30-degree day, and another guy's reporting a temperature where he's got an aftermarket head. It's got a three-quarter-inch three reach spark plug, aftermarket alloys, 
You know, he's got a different compression ratio. He's down at sea level, and he was doing 80 fucking miles an hour on the highway. Sorry, I'm going to probably swear in this one, because this particular thing really friggin' pisses me off. So after getting all of these temperatures together, we want to do what's, uh, what we're going to call a discrete look at how the temperature flows through the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the heat, and we're going to put it in right here. Okay, so since our ambient temperature is 100 degrees, we're going to start at 100 degrees. Now, I don't have the draw, line drawn all the way down here, but this line is continuous down to here to 100 degrees. So we dump the heat in, it goes all the way up to some temperature. Well, 100 to 350 is 250 degrees, 250 plus 350 gets us to 600. So we shoot all the way up to 600 degrees. At which point we now take the 90% of the cooling air and we apply now we know that we're going to, of course, go, we're going to repeat this. So I run from here, up to there, down to here, up to there. Thus, our temperature drop takes us down to 100 degrees. Now I know I said earlier that you can't get to 100 degrees, but that's 100 degrees in the real system. This is a discrete system. This is just a modeling. This is a way of modeling the system. We're going to break it up and it's not going to go to 100. But for right now, 600, 100. So, since we've got 165 degree oil heated air, let's write that down. 165. And I've got 100 degrees. And we've got the second law of thermodynamics, which says heat goes from hot to cold. I've got 165, I've got 100. What, what direction does the heat go? So, I take my air, I dump it into the 100 degrees and the 100 degrees goes up. So in this kind of a discrete system, if I dumped the heat in, it would definitely at that point go up. But this is not actually the way the system works. What we're gonna do is break it up into an even more discrete fashion. We're going to take the heat, 100% of the heat, and we're gonna break it into nine pieces. <laughs> Each of those pieces is gonna be somewhere, what is that, about 11%. 11 so we're going to bounce up, we're then going to take 10% of that 90%, that's 9% of pop, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. So we put heat in, we take heat out, 9 times. So the question you have to ask yourself is then, what is the high temperature? Well, I've got 500 degrees, remember now it's 500 degrees, 100 to 600. I'm going to divide it 9 ways, that's 55 and a half or about 56 degrees. I've, you know, some of it goes up, some of it goes down. It's plus or minus 28 degrees around our average temperature of 350. Means I'm going to hit a temperature of 378 at the high. I'm going to go down to a temperature of 322 degrees at the low point. Apply it, drop it, apply it, drop it, etc. Until we've gone through and we've applied all the heat, 100% of the heat, and we've applied all 90% of remaining air. Tick, 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 tick. We then finish at the end of that process. 322 degrees. Now, whereas back here we applied the you know the cooling air at 165 to 100 degrees and the temperature went up, we now are closer, having broken our discrete airs up into a more more discrete fashion. <laughs> we can now take uh, the 322 versus the uh, the 165. Look at it. 165 to 322. What direction does my temperature go now? Okay. Now I know how you started this. You would have started this going, yes, you're dumping heat into the motor. But we've actually run through. This is how the system could be discreetly broken down. We've determined temperatures. We get to a particular point where I can now apply the air. What temperature? It's going to go down, which means at that point, we did not dump heat into the motor. We actually cooled the motor, and you can actually calculate this out. I'm not going to do it, but you're going to drop this thing another 20, 30 degrees if you do that. Second law of thermodynamics okay, tells you that in the doghouse world, you take the air, you dump it out. You're just taking cooling air, and you're throwing it away. In my particular motor, I take, I've got a doghouse fan. I take all of the air. 
I draw it through my cooler and I get to take my 10% air. I get to take my air and I get to apply it and I get to cool my motor even further. So I hope you found that interesting. Okay, so anyway, like I said at the beginning, this particular video is how I'm going to run my car. Okay, I know things. I don't live in the world where I think that, uh, you know, I'm dumping heat into the motor. So I have to run my doghouse, and I have to take my air, and I have to dump it out by the transmission. See, that air doesn't get hot enough to not be able to also cool the heads. So I like to take all the air, including the air that's gone and cooled my oil, and run it through. You do what you want to do. I know that it's going to work for me. It's worked for me in the past. It's worked for that guy, Custer. It's worked for that other guy I found over in Virginia. It's not uh, it's not a bad system. Now, I don't understand why Volkswagen, back when they were designing the doghouse, I mean, it used to be that you had your cooler inside the fan shrouds. You put it right down in there. You blew air through it. They knew that it plugged up and that uh, you were going to get hot on that side of the motor. So why then did they, why did they go to the doghouse? See, in the inside the fan shroud, every single bit of air is used to cool the motor. Even if the air gets warm going past the oil, it still has plenty of capacity to cool the heads. So why did they run a blow away? Why did they take the air and blow it off? You know, the only thing I can think of is that they, they, they must have tried doing some kind of a draw through system. And they probably never got the balance quite right. Something must have gone wrong. I mean, it just doesn't make sense that they would have gone with what they did. Take, I mean, it's a good system, covered the warranty. But you've taken air, we just got rid of it. And, you know, it takes horsepower to run the fan. I mean, I'd have to go back and look at my uh, look at my spreadsheet. But I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's about a one and a half horsepower to run the fan at, uh, you know, about 65 miles an hour. So if you're taking 10% of the one and a half horsepower, that's 0.15 horsepower. And, uh, you know, again, I've got a mileage channel. It's like, how do I get 0.15 horsepower back? Well, I can kind of get it back, like I said, by taking it and doing the draw through. I take the air and I draw it in and then I run it through my fan. And uh, it's not going to heat my motor up and you're not dumping heat into the engine. It, it's, uh, I'm using every ounce of air to cool to the maximum capacity that that air can possibly cool the motor. Um, yeah, I guess that's good enough. I'll do more later. Bye.